always dreamt about creating that perfect desk setup, watching so many videos that seemingly found the perfect balance between productivity and aesthetics, yet I continued to work from a cobbled together space. Even worse, I've owned and operated a furniture company for over 17 years, and my space still looked like this. In order to create the best space to get my mind in the right place, I knew it needed to be clean. The minimalist design where everything has its place was extremely appealing to me. On top of that, I wanted to add in additional lighting for ambiance and improved focus. When I work from home, I needed to maximize my productivity, and this is how I believed I would accomplish that. The foundation of any good setup is the desk itself, and after waiting 17 years, I decided to spoil myself with the S-Series from New Heights. This premium sit-stand frame uses aluminum columns for a much different design than you'll typically find with steel tubes on a standing desk frame. It's also paired with a one and a half inch thick hard maple top and a dark stain that really stands out from the rest of the silver frame. The cross support adds lateral stability to the overall frame structure, and when paired with the reinforced steel foot, this desk is a tank. Cable management with a standing desk can be a bit tricky as there really isn't a large panel to hide the cables behind. The S-Series comes with a cable management box that makes hiding wires under your desk very straightforward. I added a power strip to route power into this cable management box and plugged everything in from there. Even with a ton of wires on my setup, I really think this turned out well. I also added some simple clips from Amazon to help route the wires behind the desk and through the cable management box. To help create the perfect lighting for my space, I decided to use the Philips Hue product line. We use Govi on our setup in the office, and I wanted to see if this Philips brand would be a nicer alternative. I started with the Philips Hue shape light strip underneath my desk, and it really helped to make the frame stand out. Had my wires been a mess like in the past, I don't believe this would have turned out quite so well. On the back of my monitor, I used two of the Philips Hue play lights that come in a two pack. I wanted to use this to push light up against my back wall versus having lighting on the wall shining back at me. Lastly, I bought two of the Philips Hue bulbs in the white ambiance to repurpose some old lights from my previous setup. And while the light fixtures that I reused weren't the best, the lights really helped to improve the overall feel of the lights in my space. After having these Philips Hue brand lights in my space, I'm loving how easy they are to use. I find that the app is quick to load and I never really have any issues syncing to all of the lights. This makes turning the lights on, adjusting the overall brightness of the group of lights or individual lights quick and easy. They also have some pretty good room scene options that you can select from as well. Overall, I've enjoyed using the Philips Hue much more than the Gobi products at the office, but they do come at an additional cost. I'm currently using the Steelcase Elite V2 at home for my main office chair. If you've been following the channel, I've been using this chair for a little over three years now, and I still really enjoy it. I typically find myself sitting in the chair at home for about two to three hours a day, but it's broken up a bit in the morning and at night. If I was spending more time at home at my desk each day, I believe I'd probably switch over to the Steelcase EMEA as it's a bit more comfortable for me personally during longer periods of sitting. I've also been using rollerblade wheels on my chair at home. I switched over to these about six months ago to test this new product that we're launching in late July of 2022. I'm loving how smoothly they roll with my tile floor and they don't get hung up like a normal two-wheeled office chair caster would. You'll probably also notice that I'm using an aluminum footrest from a company called Sitmatic. They make this footrest for a standing desk chair called the Pogo. And while I don't love the Pogo, I do like their footrest and I thought it looked nice with my desk frame. For my keyboard and mouse, I went with the popular Logitech MX Keys keyboard and the MX Master 3 mouse. Honestly, this is my first nice keyboard and mouse that I've ever used. Prior to this, it's always been the cheap entry-level Logitech stuff. These two products are solid and they just feel good in your hands. I'm absolutely loving the thin profile of the MX Keys keyboard and that tactile responsive typing. The backlighting on the keyboard in white is just super simple and clean, but it looks really good on the desk. The mouse fits in my hand better than anything I've used before. And every time I use my mouse now at work, I'm just a bit disappointed. But these weren't cheap though, so that's why I'm just gonna wait a bit to upgrade at work. 
I also need to start utilizing more of the functionality on this mouse so it doesn't feel like such a waste. Like many of the setup videos we've all watched on YouTube, my setup also features a few items from a company called Grovemade. Now they did send these to me at no charge, and while they're on the expensive side for add-ons, I do believe they are good quality. I'm currently using the headphone stand with my Bose QuietComfort 35 headphones, a small paperclip holder I use to put my SD cards in, and a plant holder I haven't quite found that perfect fake plant to add to it yet. They all seem to match my hardwood top like they were stained to match on purpose, which is a really nice look. Over the past few months, I've been testing out some different cell phone chargers to use at my desk. I wanted something that I could also charge my other Apple devices like an Apple Watch. The Fanisic is the fourth charger I tried and it charges my phone super fast and has a built-in charger for my watch as well. It also has an LED light in it to let you know that the device is charging properly, but can be turned off if I don't want to see that bright LED light. It also holds my phone at an angle where I can easily manage to view my messages coming in and quickly respond if I want. Honestly, overall, this has been a solid option for under 40 bucks. For the last few years, I've primarily switched over to a laptop for computer work at home. For my new setup though, I wanted to switch back to a desktop I get something compact that looked nice on my desk. I also do some photo and video editing, so I needed to make sure it was powerful enough to run Adobe programs, and also as I make a change into more PC gaming, play games like Call of Duty and 1080p. I'll be honest though, I'm a bit of a newbie when it comes to quality PCs, so I decided to get something pre-built. I ended up going with the NZXT Mini Series. I thought that this compact case was nice looking and the actual PC itself was powerful enough to run the programs I wanted. Overall, I've been super happy with the computer that they sent. The last accessory on my desk is my microphone and I'm currently using the G-Track Pro from Samsung. This is paired with the Samsung retractable arm and I'm really loving the flexibility that this arm provides. It helps to keep my cables clean and just using the stand before almost made it impossible to find a home for the long USB cable connected to my PC. I found that this arm allows me to tether the cable to the arm, extend or retract without any additional loose cables. Overall, I think the Samsung G-Track Pro is just okay for sound quality. And I honestly prefer the Shure MV7 mics we're currently using at the office for a more rich and consistent sound with our voiceovers and podcast style content. My monitor setup is a bit unique with a large 32 inch monitor that's in landscape mode and a secondary monitor in portrait mode. The main screen is an LG 32 inch 4K LED monitor and it was only about $300 at Sam's Club. This monitor though has been a significant upgrade to my fairly basic ViewSonic I'd used in the past. It also has enough inputs that I'm easily able to switch between my desktop PC, a laptop and my Xbox. I found the secondary monitor is a great way to double stack browsers for research and also view large spreadsheets for work. I'm currently using a custom RA Hover 2 monitor arm to support both of my monitors. This gives the illusion that the second monitor in portrait mode is suspended in the air without a post. I wanted this to keep that minimal look, but also give some flexibility with viewing height for both my main and secondary monitor. I have a ton of wires running up the backside of my monitor arms post, which I use 3M Velcro to tie together better. The only addition would be to maybe add a sleeve to completely tie all the cables together where you view them from the front or add a desk shelf to hide them a bit better as well. On the top of my monitor is the Quintus light bar and I've recently added this to my setup. Prior to the Quintus, I had been using a few other including the Basis and BenQ light bars. I found that these have been amazing to provide better lighting for tasks on my desk surface and also provide a more consistent light than a traditional task light would. They also help to keep the light off the desk surface to keep that minimalist look that I'm trying to achieve. I've really been loving the fact that I now have a proper desk setup at home. It's crazy how something so simple can make you feel better about working from your home office. And through this experience, I really learned that this space will always be changing over time. I found there's a ton of different desk accessories I currently have my eye on and some other alternatives to my current monitor setup. Stay tuned as I post updates to my setup and thanks so much for watching.